Welcome to another edition of 42 straight years in on a crackhead update. About 6.30 yesterday, me and my old lady went up to the Fiesta Shopping Center and was parked in front of Dollar Tree. This young white, white guy walked up. Uh, Metro PCS is right next to Dollar Tree. And uh, he walked up with a backpack on and Metro PCS was closed. Man, he just went to screaming and hollering. Threw his backpack down on the sidewalk. Started saying, my life is over with. My life is over with. I'm just going to kill myself. My, I don't know what the hell. Maybe he was trying to pay a bill to keep his phone from getting turned off. And he had cash. Uh, you can pay your bill online. I pay all my bills online. I never go. But I don't know what it, what the issue was on him. We were just sitting in the car with the air conditioner running looking at him. Man, he screamed all the way across the parking lot, just walking and screaming, headed down Ross Avenue. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your shanks out. Let's get ready to ride. Uh, Y'all still got the, the true blue. Still got them sitting here. I didn't buy but one bag of them. Uh, I got some... Uh, Half a gallon of ice cream in the refrigerator. I guess me and my old lady are busting down. I don't know. Football may come on this weekend. And we we'll eat True Blues and ice cream. Uh, somebody in the comment section asked me about my best and worst sale partner. I done had uh, a lot of bad ones. And I had a lot of good ones. Majority of the time, if you was bad, I'm going to run your ass off. <clears throat> I'm going to make your life miserable as hell in that cell. I'm going to run you off. Bad enough, I'm going to be locked up. I ain't taking no shit from no fucking cell partner. That's the only uh, retreat I got is to go in that cell and relax and read or and catch up on my typing. Or, man, I ain't got time to put up with no bullshit. He got his problems. I got my problems. Well, anyway... I got transferred from the East Ham unit to the Ramsey 2 unit. And I had just served three 15s back to back in solitary at East Ham before they transferred me. And uh, back in the day, you took all your property on the bus with you. It wasn't like now where the uh, transport your property maybe 45 days later to a special chain bus. It wasn't like that then. You take everything you own with you. And uh, when I arrived at Ramsey 2, after I went through, talked to the warden, the field major, got assigned to a one hole, and uh, they sent me to the cell block, the building tunnels, at the inmate guards on that cell block told me what kind of guy this was. And the uh, head inmate guard, he'd say, man, if you have any problem with him, just get on his ass. But they didn't like it. Later on, I figured out why. Anyway, I moved in the cell, and he was in the day room. When he come to the day room, he's looking around, he said, damn, man, where you come, sir, at? I said, man, I just did 45 days in solitary. I was down, I think I weighed 131 pounds. I had kind of got used to it. Even though I didn't stay at East Ham but four months my first time there, I had been a solitary about eight fucking times already. So I got used to it. I didn't lose all that weight like I did the first few times I went. Still, I was hungry as hell, man. Ramsey 2 feed good as hell, just like Ramsey 1. They food is good as hell. And this guy, he had a lot of commissary. He told me, man, uh, What's yours is yours, and what's mine is mine. I said, all right, man. I ain't telling him that I got about $1,800 on my account. That was a lot of fucking money in the 70s. I didn't tell him that. He said, you can't eat all them damn law books. I didn't explain to him, man, I'm trying to get out of prison. That's why I got all these fucking law books. I didn't say shit. But me and him working one whole together. So, uh. One night, I was just laying up there, reading one of my law books, 
he made him, he bust down him a spread, which he do every day. Man, he eat like hell. He never offered me shit. So this particular day, this motherfucker was eating some pork and beans out of the can. Just got a spoon to eat them. He didn't heat them up or nothing. And it was about two teaspoons of pork and beans left. He offered them to me. Hey, Sally, you want these? I said, no, nah, man, I'm good. I hadn't been eating that, eating that chow hall trying to get my fucking strength back because I work in, in, the guy, in the field. You had to have some fucking energy to do that hard-ass fucking work. Now, Ramsey 2 worked hard, but it was totally different than Ramsey 1. And uh, we come in from work one day at noon, and the inmate guards told me to go to the commissary. I went to the commissary. The commissary officer said, uh, hey, you got three money books from the East Ham unit. You make commissary right now. You got a list made. Back then, you had to write your list on a notebook paper. They didn't have commissary slips like they got now. You write your order on paper bag. They gave brown paper bags at the commissary. You could write your, your list on anything. And uh, But while I was in solitary at East Ham, I had uh, a homeboy man sign me up every time it was money book signed up. I didn't tell this fool none of my business. I really didn't even talk to him. He was, he, I forgot where this clown was from, but he fell out of Tyler, Texas. And he only had a five-year sentence. He ain't made guards and like him because he had somebody on the outside was blessing his game. He had plenty of money. And, and he didn't give them shit. They come up there to borrow shit and he don't let them have it. So uh, I, I normally didn't buy food. But if I did all that damn solitary, I broke down and got the roast beef, the chili. They didn't sell Roman noodle soups back in the day. Uh, I bought me a spread and I had to have plenty of postage stamps because I was doing a lot of legal work and I need to mail legal documents out. And uh, I got a case of soda, a couple guys in, in my squad, I bought them pints of ice cream. I got some chochos, well, po popsicle sticks, popsicles, they used to call back in the day chochos. And I bought my 10 chochos, came and passed them out to the guys in one hole. When I come in the door, I got to go in the day room and wait until the inmate guards get the cell door open. He said, uh, uh, I heard him say, yeah, that's my cellie, man. Look at all that commissary my cellie got. So we get in the cell. I go, well, he let me go in the cell and he stayed in the day room. And I'm putting my stuff in the locker and shit. And uh, when he did come up, he said, hey, Sally, you want to make a spread? Let's make a spread, man. I said, no, nah, man. I said, when I come in this cell, you ain't offer me a damn thing. Me and you ain't going to make no spread. Let's keep it just like it was. Remember what you told me? What's yours is yours, and what's mine is mine. At this particular time, when I made commissary, it wasn't commissary time for the rest of these guys. They let me make a special commissary. Because I had all those fucking uh, money books. I only spent one money book. I still had two more left. $30 money books. That's all we could spend back in the day. Was $30. Every two weeks. But the thing was so cheap. You spend $30. You have two paper bags full of commissary. And uh, he started trying to talk. Just keep talking. I ain't saying nothing. I do him the same way. I make me a big ass roast beef spread. And uh. Sit there and eat all of it by myself. Don't offer him shit. I clean the bowl out and shit. And I, I was on the top bunk. I get up on the top bunk and uh, get a law book, start reading it. He just keep talking. I say, man, I'm trying to concentrate on my book, man. I don't, I don't want to talk to you. You ain't been talking to me. And uh, one word led to another one. So I jumped off the top bunk just as cool. Went in my locker, I come looking for something, and I had uh, two pair of socks. I put a Peter Pan peanut butter jar in the sock. Back then, everything came in glass. It wasn't in plastic like it is now. Like, canned goods was in actual cans. Sandwich spread, all that stuff, it was glass. I put that Peter Pan peanut butter in that, 
in his two socks, tied him up with my back turned toward him, and I turned around and waylaid his fuck ass. I beat the hell out of him with that peanut butter. First blow stunned him. He was, he was out of the fight the first blow. Yeah, shit broke, so I just started kicking the shit out of him. Ramsey 2 is real strict. Man, they scricking hell over there. And it's quiet, because back in, in Ramsey 2 wasn't like Ramsey 1. Where you hear guys playing dominoes, and playing poker. Ramsey 2 had the silent system down pat. No talking. They don't even allow that shit over there. You know, inmate guards here. They say, fight, it's a fight somewhere. So uh, they trying to figure out where I lived on three row. Finally, they made it up three row, and I just kept beating his ass. They got the cell door roll open. Took me down to see the major. The major was Big G. That was the major on uh, Ramsey 2. His name was Grimmin. And uh, he took me down to see him. Now, inmate guards lied for me. They say, uh, he said, well, y'all bring this old sorry ass nigga down here. He said, uh, they say, uh, Major, he didn't start this problem. His cell partner was fucking with him. And we had told him to whoop his cell partner ass. So they didn't do shit to me. They locked his ass up and let me go. No disciplinary, no nothing. And when he got out of solitary, they moved him to another cell block. They left me where I was at, moved him to another work squad. We was in one hole together. They put him in three hole. And uh, that's just one incident come to my mind. But I done had several sorry ass cell partners. I've had some that I just packed that shit and throw it out in the day you know, and throw it out in the fucking day room. You got to go, fool. I pack this shit up myself and throw it out. You know, yeah, somebody in the comment section asked me about South Park Mes Mexican dog, or SPM. The rapper out of Houston who's locked up for uh, messing with uh, young girls. And he asked me about why he don't take a DNA. You know, I haven't looked up the facts of his case. I mean, he got high paid attorneys. They would know if he was actually innocent. See, it's different levels in messing with teenage kids or young girls. You can just touch her. That's assault. So it won't be no DNA. You ain't necessarily got to penetrate her to get a case. You can just touch her improperly and you got the case if she reported. Now, I don't know what the facts is case, but the DNA, the motion to file for DNA is in the inmate staff council inmate handbook. And it's in all Texas prison law libraries. Even though he's in protective custody, the law library come around every day and ask you if you want anything from the law library. And all you got to do is send a request slip in, and they will bring that book to him. All the inmates know about Staff Council for Offenders Handbook. And he got motion, got child support, uh, how to get jail back time, how to get a time cut, uh, how to file a motion for a fast and speedy trial, or uh, how to file a real habeas corpus. He got all that stuff in an inmate handbook. So I don't know the facts of his case, if a DNA uh, test will help this guy out. And let me see what my other subject is. Uh, somebody in the comment section asked me about uh, youthful offenders. They, they, you, they, in the past, they were housed at the Clemens Unit. It's located in Brazoria. And uh, it's, a young, it's for young offenders. The prison is for young guys. But these guys, some of those guys are 14 years old, 13 years old. They, are, they were housed there. They had so many problems out of, of these guys being harassed and assaulted. So they moved them to the Ellis unit in Huntsville. Now, they're isolated from the rest of the general population. They don't intermingle with the hardened convicts. They go to school by themselves. They go to law library by, them, law library by themselves. They go to chair by themselves. They go to the rec yard by themselves. That's the new program they got for youthful offenders. It's something, you know, everybody's favorite pastime should be trying to get out of poverty for the people that's in it or at the poverty line. I was just checking something, some stats. 13.6 of the people in Texas live below the poverty level. 
That's a lot of people. That'll give you something to do instead of worrying about all the bullshit. It's bad when you're so poor, you don't even know you're poor. And I, you, you see it in these inner cities. Some people might live with their head in the cloud, but uh, go to the inner city neighborhood and you'll see people that uh, they not destitute, but they're not living no American dream. They live in an American nightmare. They're not living no dream at all. You know, even though the average person, the average and majority of people are average, contrary to popular belief, you are average. And uh, that's over 100 million people in America that are average people. And those average people, maybe three paychecks from being homeless, they damn sell. The average person don't have $1,000 in his bank account. And that's the average person. Everybody try to live above their means and don't know how to budget. My old lady, all constantly always telling me, why you don't go buy this? I, I tell her, hey, I remember when I didn't have no money in my pocket. None. All I had was some cigarettes, a lighter, and a cell phone in my wallet. That's it. No money. That taste is still sour in my mouth. I'm not just going to burn through no money just because I'm doing fairly decent. I'm not just going to, I'm not going to do it. You don't never know what the future holds for you. The universe right now is being kind to me. It's being real kind to me. You know, I don't ever take nothing for granted. I ain't never went through life thinking nobody owed me anything. You know, people talk about all their problems. I can say, hell, that's why I smoke, use drugs. I couldn't handle all it. Well, I couldn't cope with this. This shit here caused me depression. Think about all four decades inside of a maximum security prison. Think about what they do. I don't use that as no crutch. I don't even tell them. For people who are over here where I live at, I don't tell them I got a YouTube channel. I ain't never told not one person over here that I've been in prison, that live in this complex. Never, I don't, I got one guy, he's a current, well, he's a retired colonel from the Air Force. And me and him talk all the time. And this man been all over the world. He is very wealthy. He's been investing in the zero coupon bonds, and, uh, and he got a lot of money. I mean, lots of money. And man, he told me once, he said, man, you the only guy to live here that I talk to. I never told him my past. Never have. I can tell there's no way that, that I could explain that situation to him. No way. I can listen to that and talk, listen to that, uh, his philosophy on life. So I just keep that to myself. But I don't use that as a crutch. I don't go through life thinking the world owe me anything. I owe it to myself. And when things were bad for me, I always stayed positive. Now, I really had to get it out the mud. I come out of that prison with zero, nothing. Now, many days, I've been walking to the bus stop. Man, it's hot just like it is out there now. It's 98 degrees here in Dallas. Man, I be walking to the bus stop. I say, man... All the shit I've been through and all the education I got, man, I'm not supposed to be living like this. But I just had to face reality. Hey, man, what you've been through in the past, as long as you was confined, naturally you ain't going to have everything people got that's been out here and never been locked up. Or uh, they've been out, they've been uh, free for years. They, naturally, they're going to have more uh, material things than you're going to have. And your time is coming. My time is near. My time is almost here. Y'all follow me over on Patreon. Keep your shanks ready. Cause these motherfuckers is going crazy. And we're gonna go crazy with they funky ass. Y'all like and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.